Good morning and or afternoon or evening. Uh, welcome to SD3 Standard Sign Graph and Desmos. Desmos is a beautiful thing. I'm sure you've seen it already this year, but if you haven't, um, Google it. It does a lot of things, but my favorite thing that it does is it's a beautiful online graphing calculator. Um, and I have everything set up for you. So all you need to do, um, I was going to say click on this, but that's not going to work for us. Um, you can go on to Brightspace, it's probably the easiest, and go into content and find the section on sinusoidal graphing. And I'm sure in there, because I haven't made it yet, is going to be the links and you'll just click on the first one. So this is our standard sign. So instead of having to use a calculator and graph the standard one all by hand, we are going to start with Desmos. So um, give me a moment. And I'll flip over to that page. All right, so this is beautiful. See, Desmos does this all for me. I don't have to worry about anything. Uh, I'm just going to make some adjustments so you can actually play around with the settings. I'm just going to make it a little thicker so it's easier to see. And I think we are good to go. Oh, just a reminder the steps. So like the divisions here, actually, I'm going to change that to 90 degrees. You can do that too. All that did was just change to what it was marked here. A little easier to see. Okay, so here we go. So is this a periodic function? Yeah. Just look at this just makes the same repeating pattern over and over again. And if I whoops, wrong way. And if I scroll out, you can see it keeps going. Is it a function? Yes, because remember functions, you want to do the vertical line test. If you draw a vertical line, you're never going to hit the graph more than once. Okay, good enough. So I'm not going to I'm not going to lie to you guys. I don't have the skills to sit here and flip back and forth between the assignment and the screen. So um, follow along, write in the answers as we go, or when I pause, you do it. And then maybe at the end of the section, I will just put the camera on my page so we can see. All right. So the first thing says, what units are used on the axis? Are they degrees, radians, and how do you know? Mm, well, we've got 90, 180, 360. That's pretty much a hint that it's going to be degrees. Radians will almost always have a pi symbol involved. So the answer is degrees. And why? No pi symbol. Um, the other thing, all right, you guys are clever. Pi is how much? Okay, so 3.14. And if you remember from when I introduced this, two pi is a circle, so two times 3.14 is 6.28. So it would have to go through a complete cycle by about 6.2. And again, these are much nicer degree numbers. Check. What are the x-intercepts? Well, this is my y-axis, this is my x-axis, so where does it cross? I could be mean and scroll back out and do a whole bunch, but I'm just going to do from what I can see on my screen today. So remember, you want to write it as a point. And for an x intercept, there's a number for x. Oh, wait a minute, can I do this? Look at that. That's another reason I love Desmos. There, ta da, that's what you're going to write. Um, but as I said, for the x-intercept, there's a number for x and y is going to be zero. And then we've got zero, zero. And there's one. Oh, look, they stay. And 180 and zero. And then 360 and zero. And then I'm going to put et cetera. Actually, if I wanted to be all mathy, I would put three dots at the front. 
three dots at the back because it continues infinitely in both directions. Every basically 180 degrees it's going to cross. Check. Now we need a y intercept. It's going to cross as the y axis, and boom, there it is at zero, zero. Okay, now we need a domain. Well, it is a polynomial function that keeps going in both directions. So for any x number you can find, so 90, I can go up or down and find the graph. So there it is. So, hey, that would be 45, right? Halfway between, oh wait. Oh, no, it's not gonna give me the point. This would be 45 on the x-axis. I don't know what that is. It looks like about 0.75. Or I can go at 270, I can go down. Anyway, if I draw a line, I'm always gonna hit it, right? It's kind of like making sure it's a function. So x, is an element of real numbers. So remember to write it nice. So bracket x and then the bar, which means such that x is an element of real. Okay, super easy. The range is not, it's not terribly hard, but it's not as easy. So with the x, right, I can go down here to 1260 and there's a number and I can go 1350 or I can go the other way. I'm centered there again. But if I go with my y values, I I start going this way. So at like 0.5, yeah, 0.75. Ooh, I hit it in a couple. There's actually a lot of places that I hit. If I go up to one, I hit the graph. But if I go like one point plus go two, I don't hit the graph at all. That means there's a range for, there's a range for a range. That's a terrible thing to have to say. What it means is that there's values that don't exist for y. So if I look back at my equation, I can put a number in here for x, anything will work, but I'm not always gonna get every single number I want for y. If I want a two there, it's just not. So the lowest we go is minus one, and the highest we go for this one is plus one. So it's a set of all y such that, and then we put the lowest one first, minus one, less than or equal to y, less than or equal to plus one. Y is an element of real. Okay, hold on. I'm gonna pop you back on the camera so you can just see what I wrote. Um, by the way, this is the such that bar. And so my range, and I've learned this, I put the lowest one, the minimum, and then I put less than or equal to y, less than or equal to one, and we're good. So minimum, maximum, y is an element of real. And this part means that between negative one and positive one, anything goes. So it doesn't have to be like 0 0.25, 0 0.5. I can have 0.89652387. It's there somewhere. Don't know where, but it's there somewhere. All right. Um, okay, back to Desmos, because it makes me happy. All right, so amplitude, we talked about that, I was gonna say yesterday, well, yesterday, because that's when I did the video, from my center to the top, so that's one, and I was gonna double check from my center down, it's one, so my amplitude is one, and my midline is y is equal to zero. All right, there's the middle of my graph. Click on the first graph to turn off, click on the second one. All right, I want this one, not that one. So all I did, and you can see right here what I did, is I just wanted the values from zero to 360 for X. So zero less than or equal to 
sorry, less than x, less than 360. Whoosh. That's it. So we can just concentrate on the one part. Um, ignore the cosine. We used to have to do the cosine law, but now we don't. But I just don't want to take it away because it's all set up so nice. All right. So now that I look at it again, it just says, how long is the period? Well, my complete cycle is one week, 360 degrees. Remember horizontal or the period is the only horizontal number that you're measuring on the axis, and it's always going to be in degrees. All right, that's it for page one. Oh, Desmos is going to disappear for a sec. Okay, here we go. So this is just some important stuff for you to know. And I have the pretty graph on here. You need to memorize this stuff, not kidding. Um, because there's, we're gonna make all these changes to them, but you have to know, understand where we're starting from so that if we change the amplitude, you'll know what happens. Or if we change the period or the vertical translation, all that stuff, if we move that around, you gotta be okay with it. Um, this just happened to be a really pretty one that I found, but it does have radians in here and that's okay. I just want to kind of just want to show you what it would look like and have you truly appreciate why you and I both work in degrees because it's so much simpler. And my apologies to anybody that ends up in calculus, you're going to be working in radians. All right, so we know from either the first day or just the fact the previous Desmos graph, that's 360. That's 80, so this must be 90. And this is going to be 270 degrees. degrees. Okay. But it looks more fancy. All right. Reminder. I found this diagram. It just makes me happy. This is where we're going in a very short time. You're going to be able to uh, deal with numbers here, 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 and here, and know how to draw a graph. Again, just a pretty graph I found. Um, in here, he uses the word cycle. If you look up here, this is the word we use. It's the same thing. So period or cycle mean the same thing. Okay. If, whoops, sorry. If we look at the diagram, the A is from the center up or from the center down. And conveniently, it's also a word that begins with A. Yeah, you know, amplitude. What does the D refer to? Okay. Well, um, Because it's showing me the distance there, I'm going to use a very mathy word, vertical translation. Because translation in math just means moving, also in science. So if you were in my chem uh, class, you learned about three molecular motions, rotation, vibration, and translation. So that's movement from place to place. Same thing in the vertical direction. I would also say midline would be fine. Um, and you can see C over here. Okay. Uh, well, you know what? If this was vertical translation, because our graph is normally at zero, now it's centered at three. Okay. So that's the vertical translation. And it normally starts x, y, sorry, got to get it right. It usually starts at 0, 0. You can see this one is shifted over. Whoops. We can call that horizontal. Translation. graph shifted. Is 
that one a bit. We expect it to start with zero, zero here, but it's over a bit. All right, ta-da. We're done. Have a lovely day. Bye.